Guys, I am on my second cup of coffee here at the MIB Master Toy Museum. And as I uh, take a stroll here in the museum, and I'm looking at the the new Mego Antrim wave of figures, um, I found myself thinking about all the comments that I've been reading um, from different outlets here at my channel, other other channels, other places. And there's been one common question that's popped up everywhere. What's the purpose of this interim wave of Mego figures? That's the question that's been a common thread from everywhere I've visited, from different channels, different uh, outlets. Well, guys, we're going to try to shed some light on why this interim wave was needed. I said, if I'm going to attack a project like this or discussion like this, I'm going to need some coffee. And it's got to be on the right form. So you know what time it is, guys. It's coffee time. With MIB. Guys, grab your coffee. Grab a chair. We got some fun topics of discussion today for you here at the MIB Master Toy Museum. I'll be your curator. But we're drinking coffee, guys. It's early. Friday morning here at the museum. I got a good night's sleep. I said, let's do some work down in the museum. But I got to clear some things up first. Why do we need the interim wave of Mego figures? Or as some people call it, the wave six. They're basically the same figures. Um, rehashed, uh, remodeled, if you will. I heard the word recalibrated at some point. The interim wave, uh, quite simply put, guys, is a wave that was designed for the international market. For collectors all across the world that really basically couldn't get in on a lot of the fun when Amigo first relaunched um, back in late July of 2018. They had to watch wave after wave after wave of Amigo figures launched without being able to have complete and total access to acquiring and purchasing those figures. Imagine living in the UK or um, Nova Scotia, wherever, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, and not being able to acquire these beautiful brand new Mego figures that you once remembered having as a kid back in the 1970s and early 1980s. That's what the interim wave is designed for. It was never intended, it was never designed for collectors here in the US. Yes, do we have access to it? Sure, there's a lot of places you can get these figures. But it was never intended for, for the US market. It was always intended for the international market. Uh, Dr. Migo said it best, uh, at some point these figures, you can look at these figures as being variants uh, that are going to be quite sought after at some point. He didn't quite say it like that, but he said you could look at these as, as variant figures if you want to. Later down the road, these figures are going to be sought after 
these figures are going to be desired. They're going to be considered variants. We already consider them their variants. But I've just, I've been reading and reading and reading uh, from, you know, collectors. And they're saying, you know, why do we need a Nosferatu? Why do we need another werewolf? Um, I'm tired of Spock. I'm tired of uh, Kirk. Uh, we want Scotty. We want, um, we want Bones. We want more. All those figures are coming, guys. Uh, I was at the 2019 Mego meet in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, Marty and Joel and Dr. Migo said they have a ton of new Star Trek figures and characters coming. It's a process. But Mi Migo being the fantastic business model it is, understands the international, the importance of the international market. Gotta have the international market. Uh, you have a fan base that's worldwide for Migo. So you have to get that international fan base involved. You have to take care of those guys. That's where the interim wave, which was brilliant, came, came in. That's how it was created. A glow-in-the-dark Nosferatu figure. A flocked werewolf figure. A glow-in-the-dark new Dracula figure. A glow-in-the-dark Gorn. Trouble with Tribble episode, Spock and Kirk. A new bare chest, Frankenstein. All for the international market. These figures were very difficult to find in their previous waves. Waves one, two, three, four. Very difficult to find. The green shirt Kirk has reached almost iconic status as far as being difficult and elusive you got a better chance of finding bigfoot than you do finding a green shirt kirk at a target store location where you live at in your state or country you got a better chance of finding bigfoot very difficult guys very hard very elusive so imagine not being able to find these guys here in the States. Imagine living abroad in New Zealand, Australia, UK. Um, I've, I've read a lot of uh, Ken Marsh. Ken Marsh is one of uh, our fantastic subscribers here to the MIB Master Toy Museum. And every time I read Ken's comments, the comments already always start that, you know, we just don't have that in the UK. I wish I could find these figures in the UK. Ken, they are coming, brother. They are coming. They'll be there. We're going to do our part here at the museum. We're going to give uh, some of these interim wave figures away. Uh, we have a, a celebration coming up for our second year uh, channel's anniversary, our channel's second year anniversary. We're going we're gonna to do our part, guys, as we always do. We're just going to give them away. We're not going to charge anything. We're just going to give these figures away. Uh, we want to continue to pr promote Mego. We want to get the word out about Mego. Mego's doing a fantastic job, guys. Um, they're going to be uh, moving uh, distribution-wise into stores, retail stores like Walmart, Bed Bath & Beyond, GameStop. Target is getting back into act. So you're going to have these figures worldwide. But I just felt the need, and I was compelled to kind of share with you guys why the, the interim wave is so needed. It's needed, guys. We have to have it. And patience is a definite virtue, guys. If you can't find these guys, give it time. They're coming.
I read somewhere where some uh, some guy said he just can't he can't find these guys. Uh, there's websites, toy websites all over the place now that's carrying these figures. Big Bad Toy Store, Coswell Collectibles, um, you name it, Entertainment Earth. And we just got ours, so it, it takes time. But I wanted to point out the interim wave, guys, is for international use. But we want your thoughts. We want your opinions. Put it in the comment section, guys, right underneath this video. We want your take on this topic. How do you feel about the, about the interim wave? Do you like the interim wave? What would you do differently? If it were you, if you worked at Mego, about satisfying the international market. Just having some coffee, guys. Putting some ideas together. But more importantly, just kind of wanting to touch bases on this topic that I'm seeing starting to take some, uh, some leverage here. It's starting to, to take some wings and grow and fly here. We, we, we want to kind of put things to rest and kind of maybe if nothing else, we want to explain about the interim wave to you guys, to the best of our ability. If you have some more insight and information on the interim, interim wave, let us know. Put it in the comment section. Did I get everything? Probably didn't. But it's important uh, that we share this information with you guys. It's important that we get the word out to our international uh, brothers and sisters of the collecting communities around the world uh, that, you know what, they matter. Their hobby is just as important. And we're excited that they're going to be getting these.